Oh, G'day champions, we've got a Fender Pro Junior. Little cute choo choo here, and it's not turning on. So, no light. We'll see what's going on. Right, so here's a look up its bum. Two AL84s, <clears throat> two 12AX7s, one uh, 1988 Groove Tubes, Groove Tubes Fender Original, um, and Electro Harmonics. So, that's probably been changed at some point. Uh, we've got a blown fuse, so we're going to take some passive measurements first before putting a new fuse in, gingerly powering it, powering it up, and seeing if we can locate either a short or a reason for excess current draw. So first I'll just check for voltage on any of the uh, power supply filter caps. We've got nothing. Now I'll check. Diodes aren't shorted. Short beep means all good. It shows a forward voltage drop, 5.7. So all five, all four in the bridge rectifier and then one for the bias supplier, okay. <clears throat> Go over to resistance mode. Check the resistance to ground on each node. Rises as the cap charges when the cap's flat flat when the cap's discharged it looks like a dead short for a second six meg point uh, six meg so that's fine next we'll check for a short on the bias supply so we're just measuring to ground on that supply line so next i'll just check the screen supply see if there's any shorts to ground through the valve through shorts to cathode or something no. Not 200k ish. Just check those screen resistors, which are 100 ohm. If we go ahead with it, we'll upgrade them. No appreciable drift there. Check the bias feed resistors are good. Should be 220. Near enough. Check the grid stoppers. In the output stage. 1.5 <clears throat> Hello One meg Oh, sorry, wrong resistor <laughs> 1.5 So all good there Looks like there's no damage to the amp Um that's at the voltage presented by the multimeter though. So we'll chuck a new valve in there, take the valves out, output valves out first, and just check that all the voltages are hunky-dory, and then we'll pop them back in. We'll do it on the Variax and not give it full voltage. Uh, and then we'll pop them back in and see, see if the current rises faster than we expect. Now, jobs like this, this amp is cheap, cheap, cheap. So we want to be fast, fast, fast or the repair will be uneconomical, uneconomical, uneconomical. <laughs> Can't do that. So we've got to be pretty quick with repairs like this, otherwise they're not worthwhile because these amps aren't worth a lot. So let's get a new fuse and get our ass in the gear, as we say in Australia. All right, so I just went to take these valves out and I noticed this bullshit down here. There's something in there and it looks metallic. You can see how close these pins are to the chassis something stuck in there I reckon that's our problem so I'll take this thing off in a recent video on the Blues Junior I said I'm not really that bothered by these things where a lot of other techs hate them but um yeah I don't know I'm starting to I'm starting to hate them a bit <laughs> when you get a few in in short succession um they do get a bit annoying. So we've got to remove the valve board for this and because the amp's tiny, I need my little stubby screwdriver. Which is the wrong size. Maybe this one will work. Yep, just. <clears throat> it's amp, amp fixing time trial here. Let's see if we can get away with no parts. Except for a fuse, obviously. 
I'd like to do some upgrades, screen resistors and whatnot, but when budget doesn't allow main board removal, we don't remove the main board. <laughs> okay. We have various pieces of foil from the rear cover that would have happened at the factory because they just put the foil over the back and then they just shove the screw through it. The foil sandwiched between the chassis and the, the back panel. So it cuts off a little disc of foil. And that floats around inside the box until one day it shorts out to the chassis. Way to go, Fender! Fucking QC capital of the world. Jesus Christ. Oh well, it's not a biggie. Uh, we'll just check the other stuff on here while we're there. Everything looks okay. It doesn't look like it's overheated. I pretty much guarantee it's biased too hot like every EL84 amp on the planet. Production anyway. But the solder joints look okay still. We can put that back in. Put the valves back in. Put a new fuse in. Give it a test. If it makes noise, out the door it goes. Alright, that's the primary resistance on the output transformer in the side of the sound tap. I'm going to flick it over to voltage. And I'm just going to turn the bastard on. Bang. 39, 36 watts, 34 watts. As the heaters warm up, both controls at 12 o'clock starting to conduct. That seems like a lot of voltage drop to me. I think it's another EL84 abuser. But it's working 3.8 volts and rising. Bit of hum. Dirty controls. Four volts. Over 100 ohms. See what the uh, play voltage is relative to ground. Might help if I turn it to the voltage reading first before resistance mode. <laughs> 343 volts. Who needs a data sheet anyway? 343. Don't worry about that. It's like advisory speed limits on the corners. It tells you to do 50k an hour, but yeah, it's good for 100. I've got a good bike. I'm a good rider. So, 340 something volts. Let's do the calculations. So, we're running at 120% bias. In fixed bias, which in two words is <clears throat> fucking stupid. Uh, and we've got 40 volts over the maximum plate dissipation. And I'm starting to hear a ringing from one of the EL84s. Because they don't like being abused for that long. So I really wish Fender would pull their head out of their ass in this respect. Read the data sheets and stick to them, you dickheads. Um, if it's a cathode bias damp, you can push them harder, yeah, because they don't fluctuate dramatically under load. But fixed bias, do not go above 70%, 60% preferably. Cathode bias, you can run at 98, 95 to allow some margin for mains fluctuation. Not fixed bias. Um, stop copying the wrong parts of other amp circuits and not understanding what they do. Anyway, I'm in a bad mood today, so <laughs> as you may have guessed. So I'll send the customer a, an estimate to turn that bias back, increase the screen grid resistance, see how these valves go, but really I don't think they're long for this world after being abused for this long, because that ringing, you can probably hear it there on the mic. 
It's like the hum is triggering the, the ringing. And it's probably humming because there's ripple on the supply because it's drawing so much goddamn current. Let's see how much ripple there is on the plate supply. 4.6 volts, that's not too bad in a push-pull amp. But yeah, just, ugh, I really wish they'd stop biasing stuff so hot. Like, it's EL84s every time. I don't know why. If anyone can answer for me why amp manufacturers seem to want to shorten the lifespan of EL84s over every other valve, please, in the comments, let me know. Until then, I'll give the customer some options if he does want this thing to last more than a couple of weeks. Because if I just do this repair... The design of the amp's going to make it fail, and then you'll be back here blaming it on me when it's Fender that made it happen. I got rid of the short, because it was just a piece of crap floating around in the chassis, but it's going to self-destruct at this level. And then he'll be back on the doorstep wondering why it self-destructed when he paid the bench fee. <sighs> Happy days. It's getting so hot, it's starting to melt my flukes. <laughs> and they're like a good two inches away from them. That's 20... 28 watts, 20, 29 watts coming out of those two valves in heat.